With the 64th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Zach Pickens, defensive tackle, South Carolina. All right, I'm going to jump into Zach Pickens here, but be warned, I've had a couple diet sodas. This is <laughs> another athletic defensive lineman that they've just added. They had Dexter, who's a big 300-plus pound guy at almost six foot six, who ran under five flat. Now you bring in Pickens. He ran 4'8", 9", 34-3-H inch arms. The traits are there. The explosiveness is there. He is fun to watch. These are upside plays for Ryan Poles. They're going to the line of scrimmage. They did it first with Darnell Wright in the first round CD. Now they come back with a couple defensive linemen. They're chasing upside. They're chasing some big time traits up front with Ryan Poles. And in Indianapolis, when Ryan Eberflus was a, the, excuse me, Matt Eberflus was the defensive coordinator, they built from the line out in terms of what they were doing on defense, trying to do that now in Chicago. With the 65th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Tyler Steen, guard Alabama. Here's the other one. And guys, with the 66th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Sidney Brown, DB, Illinois. All right, let's I'll start one at a time. Let's start here with Steen. He was a tackle at Alabama. They announced him as a guard. Think about Landon Dickerson, another Alabama offensive lineman he'll be playing with there under a coach in Jeff Stoutland who spent a lot of time at Alabama. So they had all the information they needed on this player. He's got an enormous lower half. Jeff Stoutland and these Eagles, they like their offensive linemen, especially the guards and the tackles, to be really big, strong guys. That's what he does. He can set that anchor inside. He's incredibly smart as a transfer coming in there from Vanderbilt. He's going to be able to pick up this offense very quickly. And another Illinois defensive back off the board. Third one. And this one is really their leader and their rock. Safety, Sidney Brown. This is a guy that... You talk to players around the Big Ten and on Illinois, and they will tell you he is the toughest player on the field. The coaches said nobody tried Sidney Brown. Well, that's the way that he plays. Downhill, very stout. He started 50 games in his career, which is just unheard of. Played a ton of football, very prepared, watches a ton of film. So he's a student of the game, and he's certainly one of the reasons why they had such a great defense last year. But really, the first true safety off the board. Brian Branch is going to be a nickel, so this is the first safety. Howie Rose and the Eagles are able to get him in a phenomenal special teams player. So he's going to get on the field, probably going to be a four down player. Denver Broncos select Drew Sanders, linebacker, Arkansas. DJ, this guy was highly recruited, five star recruit out of high school, number one athlete in the class of 2020. He was a 10, 900 meter guy. And it just didn't click at Alabama. You know, positional differences. And then he goes to Arkansas, and he played the middle. And boy, did he have a great season. He played in the middle. Then they also cut him loose some on the edge and let him rush the quarterback, which he did a really nice job of. He's a, he's a slippery blitzer. But while you're drafting him, it's for what he can do in coverage. To me, with that size that he has, matching him up with tight ends, I think that's going to be a big role for him in this Denver defense. Lions Let's check selection. it out. Please welcome Pro Bowler and Global Flag Football Ambassador, Lions wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown. What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Damn, so this is what it feels like to be up here, huh? Nice. This is nice. With the 68th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Hendon Hooker, wow. quarterback, Tennessee. And one of the guys one assumes Hendon Hooker will throw to just announced his arrival in Detroit. So that is a plot twist here atop round three, the Detroit Lions are the ones who take Hendon Hooker off the draft board. And there was a lot of discussion about them going running back linebacker in the first round. Well, they turn around and get the most important position here in the third round with a ton of value with Hendon Hooker at this point in time. The offense he played, and you guys touched on it, it's that old Baylor system. They are going to spread you from sideline to sideline. It creates a lot of space. You get a lot of vertical shots, particularly from the slot with Jalen Hyatt this year. The accuracy, the ball placement is pristine. It's a lot of catch, rock, throw in the in the pocket. You don't see him have to move around too much 
You get glimpses like this, though, of the athleticism to escape and make some things happen, some design quarterback runs. You can sprinkle that in. You're not going to want to major in it. But there were three questions about him, and while he's here in the third round, it was age, it was injury, and it was the offense. And the teams that met with him said, we have no concerns about his ability to transition to an NFL offense. The injury is going to be fine, and the age, it is what it is. Well, you're seeing this offense at work right here, and you talked about, you know, he didn't move around a lot. When he, when he did need to leave the pocket, he can, but that's by design, and it's actually the most difficult part of this offense. It's a wide receiver-based offense where they're running read routes, as you know, CD, down the field. So he's got to just sit in there and allow those receivers to make those decisions before he unleashes down the field. And for a guy that was throwing it deep down the field, 70% completion percentage, over 70. He set a Tennessee record. I mean, this guy can throw it down the field with efficiency and accuracy. With the 69th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Nathaniel Dell, wide receiver out of Houston. Woo! All right, so right from their backyard, a little tank. This one now, if, you, if you're watching him, you're going to think you're watching it in fast forward because that's how fast he plays. Forget the 4-4-9. He looks like he's running 4-2 when you pop on the tape. 5'8", 165 pounds. Reminded me of Marquise Brown, just how sudden he is. Look at the quickness. Down in the red zone, there's a reason why his production was off the charts. Guys can't get their hands on him. And then after the catch, he can make you miss. You see the spin and then the acceleration that he possesses. They got... A quarterback in C.J. Stroud, Joel, that is a deep ball thrower, yep. and he's got a receiver now that can really go get it. I love, you know, Tank Dell's, his whole path to Houston. He started at Alabama A&M, and then he had to go to junior college. Then he winds up with Houston, but you're right, that speed jumps off. And another thing, versatile as far as ways he can produce because you can put him back as a return man. And he provides a lot of value on special teams as well. With the 70th pick, in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Byron Young, defensive tackle, Alabama. This is the first of two Byron Youngs we're going to see get drafted this year. This is someone, when you watch him, he got a lot of cleanup with Will Anderson. So you see Will Anderson create some havoc, and then he was able to finish it off and clean it up. And CD, he's going to play in that tilted nose off the center. You can use him some as a three technique. I think his real value is against the run early on and maybe more to come as a pass rusher. And he knows how to use his hands very well, plays with great leverage and strength inside, and does not mind taking on those extra blockers to keep everyone else clean in that Alabama defense. With the 71st pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Kendra Miller, running back, TCU. This is an angry runner, and I mean that as a sincere compliment. He gets downhill and he attacks defenders. He has a second gear once he gets out there in the open field, and you can also sprinkle in the screen game with him so he can get involved in pass. I thought he was physical and pass pro as well. I wish we had a chance to see him healthy all the way to the yep. finish line this season. That's exactly right. I love his makeup. When he was being recruited, TCU had already signed the number one running back, a five-star recruit, their highest ever in Zach Evans. He went there anyways, and Zach ended up having to transfer because Kendry just went to work, and he's a slashing style runner that can get it done. With the 72nd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Garrett Williams, defensive back, Syracuse. The instincts and quickness, that's Garrett Williams' game. He's coming off of an ACL, so it's hard to slot him in. Wondered where he was going to go in this draft. Thought this was an opportunity for him to go in the third round. Some had him a little bit later on. The deep speed is really the only question, but you can watch him on special teams. You'll see him on kickoff coverage. You see the toughness and the instincts. Those are his best traits that he's working with. They're going to trust him to play off, find the ball, and go get it. With the 73rd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Jalen Hyatt, wide receiver, Tennessee. Well, that is a very good receiver that is going to the metropolitan area, Jalen Hyatt. 
is going to the New York Giants. Charles? Really blossomed this past year. Obviously, the speed is the key to everything, and he really broke out against Alabama. Five touchdown catches in that ball game, which announced everyone to announced to the rest of the world, this guy is for real. He stepped into the breach when Cedric Tillman got hurt earlier in the season, became the number one wide receiver. He was a guy who had to find his way. Remember Bayless Jones? Bayless Jones came to Tennessee and really took the spot Jalen Hyatt was supposed to have. So Hyatt had to work his way back, worked very hard in the offseason, a lot of time on the jugs machine, working to become that guy again. The key to him, guys, as I see it, the speed we know about, we're going to have to see him develop a little bit more as a route runner, run a little bit more of the route tree, and can he be creative when he catches the ball in a standstill? We, when you catch him on the run, he's going he's gonna to be extremely dangerous. You throw him a hit, you throw him anything inside, where he has to make the next move and create, that's the next step for him as I see. If you watched that Alabama game and took a drink every time they caught a vertical from the slot, you'd have been drunk by halftime. I mean, on the floor, he drunk. torched Alabama he in that game. Him. In fact, Bama, they would tell you the four best players they played against – B. John Robinson was in there. Jalen Carter, Jalen Hyatt was in that as well. Three draft. The Cleveland Browns select Cedric Tillman, wide receiver, Tennessee. It, it's a volunteer party right now at the wide receiver position. We saw their quarterback go. Now you get these two wideouts coming off the board. Big receiver, 213 pounds, almost six foot four. He plays fast. He attacks the football. I wrote down in my notes, this guy just big bodies dudes, Charles. Down the field, you see it on slants as well. He'll wall you off. He's a big guy who plays big. Two years ago, a thousand yard receiver after they lost to Florida, went to the coaching staff and said, I need more responsibility. I need to be much more of a focal point of this offense. They made him so, and he really blossomed. Would have been the wide receiver one this year, had an injury early, ended up coming back after surgery to play down the stretch. But here's the added dimension. Toughness will block at the point of attacks. And what does Cleveland like to do? Run the football. They'll need that from him. The Atlanta Falcons select from the Ohio State University, Zach Harrison. Well, here was a guy that was highly recruited, right? Five stars to a place that was pumping out defensive ends, right? You got Chase Young's and the Bosa's, and he didn't quite reach that level. However, in this last season, DJ, when you watch him on tape, he was in the backfield constantly. 33 pressures led the team, but he didn't fill up the stat sheet with those sacks. But I thought he embraced who he was. He just played physical and stout and strong. Almost all of his rushes this year were power rushes. I thought there were times early in his career where he was trying to be too cute, trying to be too finesse. This year, he just realized I'm six foot five. I'm 274 pounds. I've got 36 and a quarter inch arms. I'm going to play the game physically in the run and the pass and had a nice role on that Ohio State defense. With the 76 pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Marte Mapu, linebacker, Sacramento State. This is my favorite player in the entire draft. Really? So Marte Mapu, I didn't know anything about him when you flip the tape on. I'm watching this Sac State linebacker. He is so fluid, instinctive, and just makes plays. He's what the modern linebacker looks like in the NFL right now. He's almost six foot three. He's a little bit under 220 pounds. He can run, cover, and blitz. Everything you want in a linebacker right now. He has that versatility to match up in man coverage. He's instinctive in zone coverage. If you can't cover as a linebacker in this league right now, you can't play. I thought I was really putting myself out there where I put him, and he ended up going in about that same exact range. Don't forget, he came to the Senior Bowl from the NFLPA game. And again, most people didn't know about him. But he was a safety that converted to linebacker, which is exactly what we get a lot of in the NFL these days. That's he can it, break and run. Here's the Rams With pick. the 77th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Byron Young, linebacker, Tennessee. CD, you're on a heater right now, buddy. <laughs> here they come. It's nice to be able to be up here on this board and see these young men come off of it. And Byron Young's a guy who I believe and you know, we I think we overuse this term, guys. But in this case, I think it's apropos. His best football is ahead of him. Remember, he came out of high school. No one wanted him at all. He ends up becoming an assistant general manager at a dollar store. All right, was working his way up the manager. 
You know, it's kind of like Louis Anderson and, and, and nice. coming to America. Nice. Then I'll get on fries. That's where the big money is. That's but right. guess what? The big money's in the NFL. Turned himself into a player coming out of junior college, Georgia <laughs> Military Institute. Comes off the edge, explosive, still learning a lot about the game. I think a lot of it is out there, and he really will be will be a big addition for the Los Angeles Rams as they try and hunt some people down in the NFC West. What I love, DJ, is that with that background, right, and, and didn't have a, a ton of football, here he is the last couple of years leading Tennessee in sacks and ends up being an all-SEC performer. Oh, he keeps tipping. With the 78th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Tucker Kraft, tight end, South Dakota State. Shout out to all the teachers in the world. I love you, teachers. Well, can we make a request for the band? Maybe a little Sir Mix-a-Lot double up? We got two tight ends here going to play with Jordan Love. Again, this is the best tight end draft we've seen in a decade. That's why Tucker Kraft is available at this point in time. In a normal draft, he goes in the second round. He's very big. He's very physical. You see that not only as a blocker, but with the ball in his hands, run after catch. He just refuses to go on the ground. He's 254 pounds, and he plays to that size, CD. This is the benefit of a deep class. You get value here with this pick. Certainly do. And Joel is a quarterback, getting those double tight ends, especially a quarterback with not a lot of experience. What does that bring you? Wow. Well, great red zone production because you can occupy the middle of the field this is a guy that had a lot of opportunities to transfer to rich and he stayed loyal there at south dakota state they ended up going on winning a dallas goddard tucker craft and by the way they won it all last year in afcs ended up beating north dakota state in the final with the 79th pick in the 2023 nfl draft the indianapolis colts select josh downs wide receiver north carolina welcome to the horseshoe yeah, Josh Downs, you see my comp there on the bottom of the screen, Antoine Randall L. That's who we remind him of, seeing him with the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the day. Very instinctive and excellent route runner, just doesn't have the size. He's under 5'9", he's 171 pounds, but he creates so much separation and provided a lot of easy throws for a big time quarterback. You see Sam Howell throwing him the ball on this video. The quarterback he had this year in Drake May is gonna be a very high pick next year. He was the go-to guy, he tracks it beautifully. He's not that far off in skill set from Zay Flowers, who we saw, saw go last night. A really good player, really strong, Charles. Again, he's compact, he's short, but he's not light in terms of how he plays. Can he throw the ball like Randall L? Or T TBD. Okay, we got to so find he, that out because right Anton Randall L was unbelievable as a quarterback. He'll play the uh, Devontae Smith role in this offense. The Carolina Panthers select DJ Johnson, linebacker, Oregon. We've talked a lot about guys that put on a show in Indianapolis. This one almost slipped under the radar. DJ Johnson ran 4.49 at 260 pounds. I feel like this has been the theme for the defensive linemen that have gone today. We've seen an unbelievable amount of edge rushers come off the board. We're seeing the upside rushers really go. This is one of those five sacks this last year. Really explosive. He can get off the ball. That's his best trait. That get off burst and quickness that's reflected in the 40 times shows up on tape. Just needs to put together more of a repertoire, Charles. Put more moves together. There's development there that needs to take place, but you have the size and the burst. That's a good foundation to start with. You mentioned earlier about when coaches get involved. A lot of coaches got involved and really like this young man. And Joel Cloud, I'm sure when you did an Oregon game, how many different places did you have DJ Johnson on your boards? Yeah. Defensive end, exactly. linebacker, safety tight end. He's played all over the place in his college career. Looks like he's going to settle in on the defensive line. If he keeps playing like we've seen him play lately, he's going to have an impact and Carolina gets another good player. The Tennessee Titans select Tajay Spears running back from Tulane. Tighten up, everybody! Man, hard to follow that, but we're going to try and we're going to check out this NFL player comparison presented by Ram Trucks. Tajay Spears, Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. Why? The ability to do it all. Ty J. Spears, size, everybody looks at him like a little guy. The last time we saw him was the Cotton Bowl, absolutely running USC in the submission in that ball game with over 200 yards. Plus, can catch the ball out of the backfield skillfully. How about Aaron Jones coming out of UTEP? A late round selection when he came out. He's turned into one of the better all around backs in the NFL. 
We're good for a thousand yards, and we'll catch the football as well. Okay, with the 87 pick in the 2023 NFL draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Yaya Diaby, linebacker, Louisville. Yeah, Yaya Diaby. He created a lot of buzz with his workout in the spring. Ran a 4-5-1, 263 pounds, long arms. Plays in that three-man front at Louisville. A lot of slanting, a lot of moving, a lot of stunning. Really quick change of direction. Flashes a nice little shake bowl move. Gets moved and tossed a little bit in the run game, but you're drafting him to go rush the passer. That's the latest pick here in the third round. When we come back, the Seahawks will have their latest pick revealed. Dolphins, Chargers, Ravens still to come as well denver just traded into that mix as well so we'll be back with the latest the seattle seahawks have traded the 83rd pick to the denver broncos with the 83rd pick in the 2023 nfl draft the denver broncos select riley moss defensive back iowa so they said defensive back. That's what I was waiting to hear, how they would announce him as a corner or as a safety. I think he can hold up at safety. I believe that's what he's going to play at the next level. Excuse me, corner. I believe he'll play corner at the next level. Look, he struggled against Marvin Harrison, but Joel, as you know, everybody struggled against Marvin Harrison, so I'm not going to hold exactly. that against him. But this is a player who made tons of plays on the ball in 21. He ran fast and he plays fast and he's very tough. I think the toughness is why some people have said, oh, he's just going to move back to safety. We saw at the Senior Bowl CD, this dude can play corner. Yeah, there's no question about it. Joel, you got to see him many times during your time covering the Big Ten. And I think that once again, just go ahead and say it. He's a white kid playing corner and people want to ding, ding him for that. They want to say he has to play safety. His speed, his quickness, his toughness, his ball skills. He is going to play cornerback. Remember when McCaffrey came out and was playing running back? We want to ding him for that. That's long gone. The same thing's going to happen here with Riley Moss. Oh, he can play. Well, they certainly like him a lot. They traded their fourth round pick in tomorrow's draft and a third round next year wow. to go get him. The Miami Dolphins select Devon A. Chain, running back, Texas A&M. This shouldn't be a surprise. Big time track speed going to Miami. If they aren't fast enough already, they just got even faster. He ran 4-3-2 in Indianapolis, has kick return value. Naheem Hines is the roll I envision for him because you see what Hines does as a kick returner. You also are going to get some home runs on screens and draws. To me, that's where he's absolutely at his best. I don't think he's going to be a high volume guy, Joel, but to me, he's going to hit home runs. Yeah, probably doesn't have the size to be a high volume guy, but he was the only power five player this last year to score a touchdown as a running back wide receiver and return man. So he's got that versatility and the speed is just undeniable on the outside. Is that head coach right there? In his mind, he's drawing up drawing up plays for him right now. Yep, he can and already he can already slot, envisioning him yep, where he's creative. going to be next to Chris Greer to our right. Your right, the GM of the Dolphins. The Los Angeles Chargers select Dayon Henley, linebacker, Washington State. The Chargers lost Drew Tranquil to the Kansas City Chiefs right here in the offseason. They brought in Eric Kendricks in free agency, and now they add a really athletic linebacker in Dayon Henley, transfer from Nevada. He's got real legit speed, and he can blitz. He's an excellent blitzer with five sacks this last year. Also an outstanding gunner on punt. He's going to excel in that role on special teams. There was a little bit of tightness that showed up some in space, but the Chargers have had success with success with guys like Kaiser White and Drew Tranquil in this portion of the draft at the linebacker spot. The Baltimore Ravens select Trenton Simpson, linebacker Clemson. There is Trenton Simpson's reaction in his home in Stanfield, North Carolina. His draft concludes, and he's going to the Baltimore Ravens, and he's joining Roquan Smith and the team to play some defense in purple. They know something about linebackers in that organization. I'm excited that he went to the Baltimore Ravens. They'll know how to use his versatile skill set, the range he possesses, the run and hit ability. You're hoping he's going to develop into a Devin White type playmaker at the second level. The range, you see it. The speed is legit, low 4-4. You can blitz him off the edge. He closes space immediately. 
I thought when you could free him up, get him outside the box a little bit where he could see better, see clearly, that's where he was at his best. He can cover tight ends. Again, there's the ability to blitz. You know Baltimore is going to be able to cut him loose in that area, Joel. It's, it, he's a bit of a Swiss Army knife in, in that regard, and that's a defense for Clemson that jumps in and out of a lot of different things. They'll run odd front, three defensive linemen. They'll run even front, four defensive linemen. Then all of a sudden, they'll be in bare defense, five def- defensive linemen. And, and in and out of that stuff, he had to do a lot for them, and I think that's why his production maybe was minimized a bit. The Minnesota Vikings have traded the 87th pick to the San Francisco 49ers. And with our first selection in the 2023 NFL Draft, the 87th pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Jair Brown, DB, Penn State. Audrey Grace, I love you. Let's go Niners. Jair Brown was my top safety in this class. High, high character, outstanding leadership. Micah Hyde was the comparison when I put on the video. He did not run as fast. He ran 4.65. If he ran in the low 4.5s, I think he goes early in the second round. Underneath coverage, his eyes work CD. He gets underneath, makes plays on the ball. You can put him in the deep middle of the field. The range to me was of someone who ran or plays much faster than that 40 time, and he will come down and he will hit you both as a blitzer and in run support. And who does he remind you of on the 49ers right off the top? Talbotonga. Talbotonga. With the 88th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Tank Bigsby, running back out of Auburn. Bring it to Tank. Go. Bring it to Tank. To Duval, decisive runner, excellent after the catch in the pass game and runs through traffic. You see contact. His feet do not go dead. They, he's able to really drive and push through contact. He's physical downhill. Look at the shoulders get square, drop his pads and finish runs. Here he is again, working downhill. The speed, the bounce, four, five, six was the 40. He's plenty fast enough. He's got that quick burst to accelerate the elusiveness you get an unblocked defender no issues make him miss making something out of nothing there for the auburn tigers again decisive okay we're, we're gonna try and get a little trick play here that's not there let's just take it and go shoulders downhill straight ahead north south he's a fun player to watch he falls into that that status of the more you watch him the more you appreciate him the more you like him but afc south does not mind adding runners do they with the 89th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Kobe Turner, defensive tackle, Wake Forest. Yeah, this is the second non-combine player to be picked. Mapu was the first. Kobe Turner, he was fun to study. He's a little undersized, 288 pounds. He was the East-West Shrine Bowl. He's one that's loose and bending. We talk about edge rushers often as, are they loose? Can they bend the edge? This is a real loose athlete along the interior. Power-wise, wanted to see a little more consistency there. I think that's going to come with getting stronger. But very quick, he's going to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And if you want to learn how to play that position a little bit undersized, I guess maybe Aaron Donald could be a pretty good guy to <laughs> pretty watch. Pretty good from. guy to watch. Remember, coming from Richmond, jumped up in classification of football. Wake Forest used to turning out pitchers and catchers and runners. They're starting to get some big guys that are getting involved as well. And I know they say in Los Angeles, guys, whose house? Ram's house? Yes. So this is the guy who says nobody comes in our house and pushes us around. And here we got Kobe Turner helping set the line of scrimmage for the Rams. The- the Dallas Cowboys select the Varian Overshawn, linebacker from Texas. Go Cowboys! Hut, 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 hut! So close. DeMarvian Overshone from Texas. There we go. And right neighborhood, is, wrong he house. Was, he was in the neighborhood. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Overshone is a long, rangy defender. Changed positions a couple of different times at Texas. And DJ, I thought he was affected most by the number of defensive coordinators he had to play under. There were changing defenses every single year. But when he showed up, he showed up with athleticism and range. As a former safety playing linebacker, one of the notes I had here is I thought he was outstanding as a spy. So if you're in a division and you're the Dallas Cowboys, maybe is there an athletic quarterback where somebody that knows how to spy that quarterback and cut down angles and close down space, that might come in handy. Well, don't don't forget, it's not just the athletic one. You got the big one. 
You've got Daniel Jones over in New he York. He can move too. I mean, Daniel Jones is an integral part of their run game. So a guy who's able to be on his feet, track those quarterbacks and make those plays in open space becomes increasingly valuable in their division. I so without further ado, with the 91st pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Dorian Williams, linebacker, Tulane. Let's go! Don't forget, you got to put those pants back in the drawer after Labor Day. <laughs> Dorian Williams from Tulane. <laughs> Every, everything's an evaluation, hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Rules are made to be broken these Every, days. It, it's kind of like when you're reviewing a play, everything's reviewable. Yeah, everything's reviewable. When you're announcing a pick, everything's valuable. What? Tell me about the <laughs> Tulane kid. <laughs> Dorian Williams is fast. He ran under 4-5. He had four sacks. There's a play against Houston where he gets knocked on the ground, immediately pops right back up, ends up collecting a sack. He got his hands on a couple footballs this year with two interceptions, can really run, can really redirect. And again, another one, I think this is a trend. I believe this is a trend. It's no secret. This guy's awesome on special teams. We start getting to the third, fourth, fifth round linebackers. Yeah. You want these guys to be excellent on teams, and he is. 300-plus tackles in his career. He knows how to get it done, and he can spy as well. I mean, he can be in that role as well. 208 of them against USC in the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> but last thing, don't forget, Terrell Edmonds is gone. So Matt Milano needs a running mate next to him. Dorian Williams could very well be that player. To help make the Kansas City Chiefs selection, we are honored to have with us the family of fallen hero Master Sergeant Bernard Dagon of the Kansas Army National Guard. <laughs> Master Sergeant Dagon was killed in action while on tour in Afghanistan on September 15, 2006. We salute him and thank his family and TAPS, the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, which offers care to those grieving the loss of a military loved one. I'm now going to turn this over to Craig, who will announce the pick in honor of his dad. Craig? The Cincinnati Bengals have traded the 92nd pick to the Kansas City Chiefs. With the 92nd pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Wanye Morris Tackle from Oklahoma. All right, let me, uh, let me get into this here real quick. You've got Creed Humphrey, the center from Oklahoma on this team. You had a left tackle in Orlando Brown who was from Oklahoma, you lost him. There was a lot of talk they were going to take Anton Harrison, the tackle from Oklahoma in the first round. That didn't happen. So they swing back and they take Wanye Morris, the other tackle from Oklahoma. Who transferred from Tennessee. There you go. Okay, yeah, got, get the ball thing in there. Get your ball mentioned in there. Uh, Wanye Morris, really, really long. They have Lucas Nyang. I think he'll come in there and compete with him. Two guys that are similar in terms of their arm length. In the run game, he can reach and cut off on the backside. I thought he was better on the backside than on the front side. He'll give a little bit of ground versus power but he's a very good athlete. He can redirect. I think there's a lot to work with, and they have a great offensive line coach. They're going to have a, a great opportunity to develop this young man. And remember, he and Trent, uh, excuse me, uh, Trey Smith were teammates at Tennessee. Okay, similar classification, can play together potentially on the same side of the line of scrimmage. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Darnell Washington. There we go. Tight end, Georgia. All right, so there you go. Darnell Washington's finally off the board. He was my 33rd overall player. They just added a massive mauler who's a more explosive version of Mercedes Lewis. And Steeler fans, just go watch Georgia play last year and watch Darnell Washington line up next to Broderick Jones and watch them maul people because that's coming to your city. His ability to displace defensive ends in the run game is ridiculous. He labels himself as a sixth offensive lineman, and that's how he plays. Look at him just bully people and get them on the ground. A big body target. That is like throwing to a moving billboard down the field. Yes. The run after catch. How about this athleticism for a guy who functions as a sixth offensive lineman? Nobody's going to want to tackle him when you get out there in space. Another one here, Joel. 
just a this guy is a, he's a mismatched player. Well, he would have had a lot more production in the pass catching game if it wasn't for Brock Bowers. You know, they played in that 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends a lot. The reason, because they could power you in the run game as Washington was lined up as the sixth offensive lineman, and then they could spread him out if they wanted to. I think he can be a much more productive pass catcher in the NFL, actually, because Bowers won't be there to steal his catches. This will tell you about Georgia. I called one of their coaches and said, hey, can you tell me about the freak tight end? He goes, he's not in this draft. I go, no, the other, the yeah, other, other freak the other, tight end. That's what? exactly right. So... Uh, is this where it works? Georgia sends their offensive players to the western part of Pennsylvania <laughs> and their defensive players to the eastern yeah. part. With the 94th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Michael Wilson, wide receiver, Stanford. Charles Michael Wilson, we saw him in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, and that's why he's getting selected right yes. here because of how impressive he was down there. Yeah, absolutely. And just remember, the biggest knock on Michael Wilson is going to be consistency because of injury. Yeah. Has not been able to stay on the field. Joel, every time you're getting ready for a ball game, you had to check your boards. Was he going to be available? Because you knew if he was, you would see what I believe is elite route running. I think you see a guy who can compete for the football really well, well built. This is a tough kid. And by the way, we had a chance, Joel, uh, uh, Daniel and I, to see TJ Hushmanzad at the Senior Bowl. And he's been training this kid. He loves him. Could he absolutely rave rave about a kid even more? Well, he was on the field. He was one of the most dangerous wide receivers in the Pac-12. But each of the last three seasons, he missed significant time. If he can stay on the field, he'll contribute. There's no doubt. To To help make the Cincinnati Bengals selection, we are honored to have retired U.S. Army Colonel Lynn Rolf Jr. with us, who proudly served our nation as an officer and Army civilian for more than four decades. (laughs) Colonel Rolf is a veteran of the Vietnam War, which ended for U.S. troops 50 years ago in 1973. We salute him and all veterans of the Vietnam War. We're thankful for your honorable service. Colonel Rolf, it is our honor. Well, Commissioner, thanks. I'd like to thank you and the NFL and our VFW for allowing me to represent over two million men and women who served in Vietnam. But especially, especially we need to remember and never forget the 58,220 that didn't come home and gave their lives so that you could be here tonight to enjoy your freedom. And now for my uh, now for my homies back in southeastern Indiana and the Houday fans out there. With the 95th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Jordan Battle, defensive back, Alabama. All right. Jordan Battles played a lot of football. He's played in 54 games with 44 starts for Nick Saban in Tuscaloosa. Outstanding eyes. The athleticism, the twitch, it's okay. It's not elite, but it's the instincts that make up for it. He's played so much ball. He plays so smart. He's able to anticipate and get great jumps, both against the pass and against the run. This guy's ready to roll, CD. This is a team in Cincinnati that lost two safeties in free agency. 
I think he'll get right on the field, and he'll be a starter week one for the they, Cincinnati Bengals. And they drafted one last year in Dax Hill, who they may want to use more as a nickel. So it'd be interesting to see how they do it. And, Joel, you understand about the special teams play. Yeah. You were at Colorado under Coach Gary Barnett, who encouraged starters to play special teams. You see that almost every time listed for these Alabama kids, too. With the 96 pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Broderick Martin, defensive tackle, Western Kentucky. There were some intriguing defensive tackles who did not get combine invites. Broderick Martin, another one of those. We've seen them come right off the board here. Quick hands. He's got a great club swim move. You'll see him stack and chuck blocks there at the line of scrimmage. Play some defensive end as well. you see that pure bull rush that he possesses. Not an elite, elite burst or get off, but someone who's 330 plus pounds who plays with tremendous power and strength. You liked his Auburn tape, didn't you? Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that's the one that got everybody's attention. So the Detroit Lions take Broderick Martin, the defensive tackle out of Western Kentucky, and that leaves them with just two picks tomorrow. With the 97th pick, in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Ricky Stromberg, center, Arkansas. This was a popular player for offensive line coaches in the middle rounds. They think he, be he can become a starting center. He's got lateral quickness. He's going to give ground versus power, but he does it slowly. It's not an immediate loss, and you can survive with that style. He's really good with angles. He's good on combo blocks. Always keeps those feet moving. You see him giving a little bit of ground there, CD, but he's able to eventually anchor down. But when he works up to the second level, really good angles, really good feel. I don't believe he's an elite athlete, but I believe he's everything you need to be a starting center in the NFL. And he's going to a big boy division in the NFC East where you're going to have to move some people and try and spring your runners. But remember, he played for Sam Pittman at Arkansas, right, yep. Joel? Yep. Where did Sam Pittman coach prior to Arkansas? Georgia, offensive line coach. That started that run of these Georgia offensive linemen and now hit Arkansas doing the exact same thing. With the 98th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Siaki Ika, defensive tackle, Baylor. I feel like I've seen this player get drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Danny, before. Is Danny, Danny Shelton. Shelton. That's, Danny who, Shelton. that's who the comp was. If only he could come on and hug the commish like Danny did <laughs> in his lava lava. Oh, yeah. that You talk about going to see the chiropractor. Knockback power from Siaka Ika. He began his career at LSU, transferred to Baylor. As a nose tackle at that size, his surprising range to make plays outside the tackle box. You get down in short yardage, you get in goal line situations, that's where you're really going to feel his value. A true nose as a pass rusher, there hasn't been a lot there. There's some upside, but he's going to do what he does best, which is get his hands on you and try and walk you right back to the quarterback. With the 99th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Jake Moody. Oh, yeah. Kicker, Michigan. Let me, tell you something. Let me tell you something. Kickers are not only people, too, but kickers are Wolverines, too. And I knew the San Francisco 49ers were smart people. I always knew it. Now it's sealed. This guy can kick footballs straight through the uprights <laughs> like nobody I've seen. I'm serious. I'm with you. I am well, serious. I'm... I have been a Michigan fan since 1986. This is the best kicker Michigan has ever had. He is beyond reliable. And the 49ers and you fans in San Francisco and throughout Niners Nation are going to love Jake Moody. Yes. Well done, San Francisco. Well done, indeed. Look at that. Kicking it from the middle of Arizona. So, 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 Robbie right there. Robbie Gold's replacement right there. Robbie Gold is an excellent kicker, but yeah, I'm clapping for you. You clap for me. Let's clap for all of us. Well done. Well done. And Jed York. Yeah. Michigan players can be Niners too, Mr. Golden Delmer. Thank you, sir. With the 100th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Trey Tucker, wide receiver, Cincinnati. Speed, 
That's what they went for here with Trey Tucker. Plays in the slot, lots of bubble screens, jet sweeps, just get the ball in his hands and let him go. Outstanding burst. He's tough with the football in his hands. He can beat press coverage with his quickness. Run after catch is what this offense is all about with Josh McDaniels. One of the reasons why they obviously love having Devontae Adams for what he can do after the catch, as well as Hunter Renfro. They've got another one now with the ball in his hands. He's excellent. Tucker can provide a little kick return as well. So you get some versatility and you get some depth potentially on specials. I think that's where he's going to have to show out early in camp in order to earn that spot. Three special teams tackles. He can cover kicks as well. With the 101st pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Cameron Latu, tight end, Alabama. Okay. Tight ends just keep rolling off the board on night number two. Cameron Latu wasn't healthy throughout his time there at Alabama. When he was out on the field, they were able to split him out wide. You can use him in line. Excellent on option routes. O offered you a little bit of wiggle at the top of the route to create some separation. I thought he was better later in the year as he got healthier. You saw a better version of him in this offense. There are times he lets the ball get into his body a little bit. That's one area he can improve on. All they right. know how to scout tight ends there in San Francisco. I'm going to trust them on this one. <laughs> With the 102nd and final pick of the evening in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select, you asked for it and you're getting it, defensive back from USC, Makai Blackman. This is a cool story because at practice at USC, Makai Blackman would go to the front of the line so he could work against Jordan Addison every day in practice. Now they're both going to be getting on the plane going from Los Angeles to play together for the Minnesota Vikings. Transfer from Colorado where he played with Gonzalez, who we saw go to the Patriots in the first round. He is always in phase, always in position, very efficient mover. His red zone interception that he had this year against Stanford was one of the best interceptions of any defensive back in this class. Joel, that defense, we referenced it earlier. There weren't a lot of bright spots, but uh, Tuli Tui Pelotu was one of them, and this was the other one here in Blackman. Yeah, and, and Blackman at Colorado was a guy that, you know, he made up what was the best part of their team, obviously, with Gonzalez in that secondary, and that was a huge loss when he went to USC. You know, that defense just never quite gelled, but he individually put together some great coverage tape, and he's certainly a tough player. 